Sketso is a toolkit for creative engagement. Basically, it's emerged from my research. I, I invented it because I needed it to work with communities in Southern Africa to find out what mattered to them and to make sure there was a way that women had a say in mixed gender groups. I then went on to use it in my ESRC funded research, my PhD at the University of Manchester, where I was working with communities in North Manchester to look at a vision for the whole of North Manchester. So I used the toolkit in the research but what I found was it's a great tool for getting research data. So participants write or draw their ideas on leaves and then they discuss them as they put them on the felt. And what this means is that everybody gets, their, gets a say, everybody gets to put their ideas down and the researcher gets data. It's got, you've got something you can take away that you can type up, write up and analyse later. The next section of work that we're going to look at is the Ketso project which for me is a project which is a classic research methodology that is very much a research method which is about how working with communities, with informants, with different people, you can start to feel the heat of what they're really involved in. What I found was I was out in, Les in Lesotho burning green fire as you do when you're um, young and enthusiastic and you've just gone and you've got this exciting opportunity to work in my case in 40 schools looking at land management and I was talking to people and trying to find out what mattered to them and this, this difficulty of actually bridging the gap between what I was thinking about tree planting and water harvesting and people's reality was quite difficult and I wanted to know what mattered to them and I wanted to, to know what mattered to all of them and I found that the women didn't tend to speak in mixed gender groups. So basically Ketso was invented out of the need to communicate with people, to find out what's on your mind, what do you like about this area, what's good in this area, what are you thinking about, what are your hopes and visions for the future, and to make sure that that was actually, I was hearing all of the voices. My research is a social network analysis of Ladyfest as a feminist social movement, and what I did in my research is I worked closely with three organising groups, so they were groups of women who came together in order to put on a feminist festival, and uh, the tool was an invaluable way of working with them from the very beginning to the very end, following the process through helping them plan at different stages and then at the very end using the tool to review how things went and to see whether they could have made improvements in their planning or not. It was also a really good way of kind of dealing with gender issues and talking about uh, particular themes that might have been a bit more difficult on a one-to-one -one basis, but doing that in a group setting where people were comfortable using the leaves to talk about things that they mightn't necessarily have wanted to share out loud with each other in a group setting. Using a physical toolkit helps focus the discussion. It means everybody has a say, but also the participants get involved in finding patterns, doing analysis, prioritizing ideas, and seeing what themes emerge. It means that really quiet people are the people who often maybe wouldn't have confidence to say something or feel their ideas aren't of value, have got a way to put an input, a, a, a calm, quiet way that they can get their ideas on the table. It also means, though, that if you're doing work with executives or pro busy professionals, that you can actually get a lot of data in a very quick period of time because everybody's writing their ideas. They're not waiting for somebody to transcribe something on a flip chart. They're putting their ideas down very quickly. You can get a huge amount of information. People feel that their time has been valued and you get really, really great research data. I think the really key thing about this as a research tool though is that everybody's point of view is on the table. You don't miss a perspective because everybody's written or drawn their idea, they put it down. All of these different angles get considered and you get to see a fuller, bigger picture of people's ideas and of your own research. It's been used in teaching and learning at all levels. is actually in use at the moment in 50 universities in the UK and worldwide. So it's really starting to get embedded in people's research and teaching and I think particularly exciting in research um, internationally. Ketso really allowed me to look at my research uh, in new ways. And I find it um, an inspirational kit because I had the chance of uh, being inspired and understanding how other people look at their own research. I think Ketso is great. I think it would really promote interaction between people and really stop dom dominant people over-talking people in a group. Uh, my research involves young people, 
So trying to get young males to settle down and behave is really hard work. You can get a lot of data down really quickly and then begin to um, analyse it and, and, and see how it's um, developing really uh, kind of intuitively almost. So what's really exciting as well is that you can use Ketso at every stage of a research process. You can use it when you're first thinking of the ideas. What, what are the questions? What am I interested in? You might do this with other stakeholders to get different perspectives and to ask what are we interested in? Why do we want to do this? What data have we got? What data do we need? It really helps to engage with those stakeholders at the beginning so that your, your research is more likely to be used and be of use to those stakeholders. You can use it then in developing the research instruments. What questions? How am I going to find out? What are the positive and negatives about these different ways of actually asking questions? You can use them in focus groups or in action learning with small groups so that you can actually get people to give data. So it's a data gathering tool. And you can use it in analysis. You can draw out themes and then you can go back and say, well, why did this work? You might do this in the research team or you might do this back with participants. Why did this work? How does this work? How do we know what's important? Do we all agree? Are there any areas of disagreement? So you can use it to develop and deepen the analysis. And then you can use it to start actually synthesizing results, writing up. Actually, I use it literally to write up my articles, to think about the key themes, where things go, how they fit together. And then you can use it to communicate and disseminate the results. This is what we found out. What does that matter to you? How might you use it? Again, going back to communities or engaging with stakeholders to find out what they thought about your research and help them see how that research might be of use to them. So it's really a great tool for every stage of the research process. I think Ketso is one of the best research tools I've seen for collaborative policy research and I think it's excellent for focus groups.